Good morning. I am Dr. Prathmesh Jain and I am a shoulder surgeon. Today, I will be explaining you about acromioclavicular arthritis. Now, acromioclavicular joint is this joint. It is the joint between the collarbone and the acromion and it is, it is a superficial part of the shoulder joints. It is different from the actual shoulder joint which is deep inside the body. The size of this joint is 9 millimeters and in width to 19 millimeters in the length and it is a diarthrodial joint. The movement is very less at, at this joint. The movement is only 5 to 8 degrees at this joint and this joint has a fibrocartilaginous disc in between and this is a joint which is prone to a lot of injury. Now this joint can have problems which is called as an arthritis that is called as an acromioclavicular arthritis and that can cause pain in the shoulder. Now there are few causes why it can cause arthritis. The most common cause is a degenerative arthritis that is because of repeated overuse and repeated micro trauma the joint becomes degenerate over time and causes pain, inflammation and synovitis. This is the most important and the most common cause. The second most common cause is a post-traumatic acromioclavicular arthritis which can be due to any trauma, any fractures in the collarbone or any dislocations in the acromioclavicular joint or any other injury. The third most common cause is a infection into the joint which can be a staphylococcus or a streptococcal infection or and the fourth most common cause is an inflammatory arthritis of the acromioclavicular joint which can be a part of the spectrum of disease of a rheumatoid arthritis or a seronegative spondyloarthropathy. Now once patient have this problem, the symptoms that the patient will present to you will be a pain, the pain will be more in the night and you can have findings which are suggestive of impingement because if there is a bony overgrowth coming from the joint or osteophytes coming from the joint, they can press the rotator cuff beneath it and that can cause impingement kind of symptoms as well. Now if the patient present to us with these symptoms, we need to evaluate the profession of the patient because this problem is more common in those patients who are doing repetitive activity, who are doing overhead activity and who are doing cross body activities like this. So if you are doing these activities then the chances are more. Thereby the chances are more in, in patients like bodybuilders, weightlifters, gym trainers and wrestlers. There are three main tests that we do in OPD for this particular problem. The most sensitive test is a cross body adduction test in which we keep our thumb on the acromioclavicular joint and then ask the patient to move the arm across the chest, across the body. And if it is painful, this is the most sensitive test for this problem. The second test that we can do is an acromioclavicular resisted extension test in which the hand is uh, placed like this and extended against resistance, keeping one uh, finger over the joint and if it is painful, it is suggestive of acromioclavicular joint arthritis. And the third, which is the most specific test is an O'Brien's active compression test in which the thumb is uh, capped at the joint and we internal rotate and uh, keep the arm like this and slowly we turn like this and if it is painful while compressing the joint, this is called as a positive O'Brien's active compression test. Now if you have a doubt of if the patient is suffering from acromioclavicular arthritis, you can do few investigations namely x-ray and the MRI. In the x-ray you need to do an, an AP view, a classical AP view. Ideally you should do a scapular wire view because that shows the acromion morphology in very good shape. And if you want to look acromioclavicular joint in particular, the best view is a cephalite 10 degree view and that is called as a Zankas view. And Zankas view is very very specific for this particular acromioclavicular joint. Nowadays these particular views are taken less but the, the investigation modality that we depend on is an MRI scan because it will show in a great detail about the acromioclavicular joint, the joining ligaments and the swelling inside the joint and it will also point towards the etiology of the, etiology of the problem. Now as far as the joint, acromioclavicular joint is concerned, it is formed by the acromioclavicular ligaments which is superior, anterior, posterior and inferior. 
Out of these, the superior acromioclavicular joint are of utmost importance and they will impart around 68% of the resistance against the superior translation. So this is the most important. Out of these four, the superior acromioclavicular ligaments are more important. Apart from that, there are two coracoclavicular ligaments, which are the conoid ligament and the trapezoid ligaments, which runs from the coracoid to the clavicle and they are the primary restraint from the collarbone going up. So if the collarbone, if these ligaments are torn, the collarbone will go up. So with the MRI, you can have an idea of all these important structures. Now, as far as the treatment is concerned, the first and the foremost treatment is an avoidance of repetitive overhead and cross body activities. Any kind of heavy work should be avoided in the first place. Apart from that, you can start with gentle physiotherapy and you can do some local modalities like diathermy, short wave diathermy, IFTs and some something similar physical therapy modalities. You can start with some minimal painkillers and a little bit of rest. You can apply ice over the area as well. If you are not sure about the pathology, you can do a diagnostic and a therapeutic test by putting an injection into the joint that can be put directly in, in, in as a clinical procedure in OPD or that can be done in under a ultrasound guidance. I usually use 20 milligrams of triamcylone for this particular uh, test. So it will be a with a local. So it will be a diagnostic as well as a therapeutic test. But if you are giving a steroid injection into the acromioclavicular joint, you should be sure that you are not repeating repeating it within three month interval. So it, if you want to repeat it, you have to repeat it after three to four months of time. Now, when it comes to a definitive treatment of this problem, the Classical modality which was explained by Dr. Mumford was an open excision of the distal end of the clavicle in which we remove the one to one and a half centimeter of the distal part of the clavicle and that gives uh, a very good symptomatic relief to the patient. This is the only joint in the body in which the joint itself can be sacrificed to relieve the symptoms. So here the, we sacrifice the joint, we remove the distal part of the clavicle and the patient's symptoms are relieved. Now with advancement of arthroscopy, we are doing this procedure arthroscopically. So this is called as an arthroscopic Mumford procedure. So we are, uh, we are attaching a small clip of this particular procedure, how we do it. And this is called as an arthroscopic distal clavicular excision. And this is a very elegant procedure because we are just making a small keyhole incisions and we are removing the distal end of the clavicle with a keyhole surgery. Now the resection depth is also reduced nowadays. Nowadays we re, uh, remove around 5 to 6 millimeters of the joint and that is considered to be technically uh, sufficient. Now if you have any doubts regarding acromic level arthritis of the shoulder, you can definitely post on the comment box. Thanks a lot.